With a significant increase in the number of anime produced over the years, it has become even more important to go through the details before starting a new anime. Welcome to Watchzilla, today we are going to give you our top 13 best anime villains. In anime, villains are usually made out to be reprehensible. One of the cornerstones of a good anime is a well-written villain, who is not just powerful but has a certain philosophy. Their evil is in stark contrast with the protagonist, with both characters polarized in such dramatic ways that there can be little discussion about who is in the right. The roles of villains in a series have been overlooked, but they're just as important as the protagonists. Nonetheless, there are dozens of antagonists that are significantly cooler than their heroic counterparts. There are tons of anime, but not all of them have eye-catching villains. However, there are a handful of villains that have withstood the test of time and are hailed as the very best to date. From hordes of devoted servants to obscenely powerful abilities that might not be ethical to use, these titans have distinguished themselves as some of the most awesome threats in fiction. By identifying them, it becomes easier to comprehend what they've done right and why they're memorable. Number 13. Shogo Makashima. A white-haired boy has made his way to our list, ladies and gentlemen. As an entity, the Sybil system arguably is more threatening. But Makashima is by far the more interesting villain. Shogo is one of the main villains of the anime we call Psycho Pass. And man, he is quite a mess. He was not only lethal but also clever with his approach. Not only does he constantly remain a few steps in front of the police but his twisted mind and unpredictability make him so intriguing. And as a villain, he gave some of the most captivating and eye-opening challenges to the protagonist. And these challenges weren't just physical. They were mentally and morally painful as well which allowed us, viewers, to have an amazing overall viewing experience. His first encounter with a cane is one of the most chilling scenes in anime. This is why Makashima is here on this list. Number 12. Muzen Kibitsuji. Anytime a character refers to themselves as the Demon King, there is a good chance that they'll probably be an anime villain. Simply being a villain doesn't even begin to describe Demon Slayer antagonist Muzen Kibitsuji, though. Muzen is the main antagonist of Demon Slayer and, together with his demons, has been responsible for countless deaths. Before we are ever even introduced to this character, his villainous acts pile up, as we learn that he is responsible for the death of Tanjiro's entire family and for turning Nezuko into a demon. Muzen is a very strong character who can beat the most powerful Hashira without any problems. When we do see Tanjiro meet the man who murdered his family, he simply turns a man into a demon to keep the demon slayer from getting in his way. His blood allows him to turn humans into demons, who then go on to do his bidding. Muzen is a heartless individual who has no regard whatsoever for the lives of humans or even his subordinates. His fear-mongering and murderous rage is in simply limited to humans, though, as he is known to kill and curse demons simply for even uttering his name. He sees them as disposable trash and, on several occasions, Muzen has even murdered his underlings to make a point. You need to look no further than his meeting with the lower ranks in the first season to see this, as he slaughters all but one for not being bloodthirsty enough. Number 11. Madara Ichiha. Naruto is full of nefarious villains, particularly in the Ichiha clan. With Madara, we learn that villainy goes back to the very beginning. Madara was one of the founding fathers of Konoha but was ostracized almost immediately. He then launched a plan to receive vengeance and eliminate conflict and deceit forever. Ironically, he would do this with illusions. Much like Aizen, Madara faked his death and set up events to lead to his return. He sets up agents in the form of other villains like Abito and Nagato. This eventually leads up to his return at the end of the series where he becomes all-powerful. 
he succeeds in his goal, temporarily trapping the entire world, showing his merit as a successful villain. Number 10. Don Kennedy Da Flamingo. Da Flamingo has always been an interesting character because he's been regarded as one of the best, even though other villains from One Piece possess much more power and narrative influence. Maybe it's because of his design, his extreme arrogance, or the fact that he was hyped up as a looming threat to the crew for so long. Whatever the case may be, what we were left with is an incredibly powerful warlord with the puffiest of clothing, and a depressing backstory that contrasts nicely with his purple theme and a wide grin. Doflamingo formerly served as a Shichibukite who worked under the world government in one piece. He took over the country of Dressrosa from King Riku and ruled for years. Doflamingo is a talented fighter who could use all three types of hockey. Furthermore, he had also awakened his devil fruit. When it comes to personality, Doflamingo is a ruthless pirate who had no qualms about killing his father and his younger brother. Number 9. Johann Liebert. Johann Liebert is arguably the best villain in anime history, and no one can replace him in any terms. Johan is the main antagonist of the monster anime series, and oh my, isn't he incredible? Neither superpowers nor any kind of special abilities, but with just his incredible intellect, Johan was able to wreak havoc. He is a genius psychopath whose actions may seem insane at first. However, the way he executes them makes them so much more interesting and captivating. He is the only one who managed to break through this list just by the power of his tactical mind. He was able to terrorize an entire city's population just by playing mind games. This separates him from the rest of the villain's hurdle, who require unique powers to make their mark. Monster is a series that plays with your feelings and morals. And Johan makes sure to make that play as fun as possible. Johan will change your outlook on villains forever. Number 8. Meruem. Hunter x Hunter stands out above most other anime in many departments, but it truly thrives with the portrayal of its villains. Hezoka and Kralo are intriguing in their ways, but the introduction of Meruem during the Chimera Ant arc was on a whole other level. The king of the Chimera Ants, Meruem was deemed to be a threat to the existence of humankind in Hunter x Hunter. Meruem showed off his cruel nature and capabilities almost as soon as he was born as the Chimera Ant King. He was the strongest Chimera Ant, who was easily able to fight against Natero, who was one of the strongest hunters. Meruem's character underwent growth when he met Kamugi. He turned into an individual who was less violent and looked at matters from different perspectives. He was still responsible for countless deaths. Seeing multiple facets of Meruem helped to cement him as one of the best anime villains, especially as his character arc was well written and satisfying. Number 7. Ascalid. Ladies and gentlemen, Dad is here. Ascalid is such an amazing character. Ascalid is one of the main villains in Vinland Saga. He wasn't a villain, he was a hero who chose crude yet realistic ways to achieve what was best for the world. Had it been anyone else, he would have succumbed to greed. But Ascalid was different. And Ascalid will always be different. There are moments in Vinland Saga when he is seemingly the most diabolically evil person in history, and then times when he possesses a surprising sensitivity and compassion. The series is largely an interrogation of violence and if any of it can be justified. Is Thorfinn more moral just because he is doing it out of survival? A lot of the questions posed in season 1 begin to get answered in season 2, and so much of the narrative force of the former is anchored by Askeladd. Number 6. Griffith. 
Berserk's ultimate villain, the charismatic Griffith, is one of anime's most popular antagonists of all. Griffith is the leader of the reborn band of Hawken and Berserk. At a certain point in the story, Griffith was adored by all the members of the original band of Hawk. After being on the verge of death, Griffith triggered the eclipse, which resulted in the deaths of almost all the members of the original group. Reborn as Femto, he raised a new army that is filled with powerful apostles, who could raise entire cities to the ground. He presents himself as a noble savior and defender of peace and justice, and in a twisted way, he was those things when fighting off the Kushan Empire. Griffith looks cool with his calmly confident appearance, his shiny knight armor, and his commanding dialogue. However, he is still a monster despite his princely persona, because he betrayed the entire band of the hawk to the god hand, and is a purely selfish being, no matter how much he defended Midland from its enemies. Griffith prioritized his dream above everything, his friends, and his morals, which made him frightening. Number 5. Light Yugami. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The greatest villains can become monsters through the single-minded pursuit of noble goals. The slippery slope comes fast when it comes to Death Note protagonist Light Yugami. Light is a villain protagonist who gains a magic notebook that lets him kill anyone he wants and uses it to punish criminals. While the goal is lofty, Light quickly devolves into seeing himself as a god-casting judgment. Luckily, Light is a genius and constantly evades authorities. The back and forth between Light and Detective L are some of Death Note's best scenes and quotes. While he may be the lead, Light is a devious and contemptible villain the entire way through. Number 4. Hisuka. Everyone in Hunter x Hunter is searching for something, and though his pursuits may be twisted, Hisuka is no different. Hisuka embodied the darkest aspects of what it meant to be a hunter. Like Natero, he sought an opponent that could push him past his limits and provide a good fight. Be they young children or master criminals, he'll pursue them to the ends of the earth with a bloodlust on par with a wild predator. Likewise, he doesn't care what happens to himself or others in this pursuit. Mass civilian casualties, the loss of his allies, or even the loss of his limbs, barely phases him, so long as he gets to fight with someone that tests his limits. As a result, he more often than not embodies chaos incarnate, wreaking havoc in his pursuit of battle and leaving a mountain of corpses behind him. Needless to say, this puts him at odds with the series' protagonists at regular intervals. Not only do Gon and his friends fit the bill for what he seeks, but they often take on enemies that prove to be exactly what Hisuka is looking for. And yet, this also serves to make him all the more interesting. He lacked any compassion toward this end, and was particularly creepy to Gon many times in Hunter x Hunter. Nonetheless, there are dozens of qualities rendering Hisuka a cool character. Not only did he defeat Gon numerous times, but he also allied with the Zoldix and had a versatile bungee gum men ability. As a result, his fights were reliably entertaining. Where other villains might strike out at the protagonists and heroes immediately, Hisuka schemes allies himself with and double-crosses people regularly, always finding the best angle to work to reach his goals. He may not be a world-ending anime villain with seismic ambitions, but he's undeniably interesting to see at work. Number 3. Frieza. We are in the top 3, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. The final stretch. Frieza is one of the main villains from the Dragon Ball series, and he is a classic villain. Alternatively spelled Frieza, this short alien is a galactic tyrant. He's a vicious conqueror who enslaves planets and then sells them. Despite calling himself a conqueror, he has a very polite facade. The best part of Dragon Ball's Namek saga is watching it gradually crack. He was part of the longest fight in anime history. He was the reason why people fell in love with Dragon Ball Z, unlike other villains that simply appear for a single arc, 
Frieza is tied into the franchise's backstory. He is still part of the show since he always tries to return and take revenge. Afraid that his enslaved Saiyan warriors would one day rebel against him, he destroyed their planet. He's also one of the few villains who returned to stay villainous. He does team up with Goku in Dragon Ball Super, but remains firmly opposed to the Saiyan. And finally, he was the reason why our planet was saved in the story. Frieza is that one villain who stands as an idol for the others. And that's why he has taken the third spot on our list. Number 2. Sasaki Aizen. Sasaki Aizen is one of the most recognizable faces in the anime community. The antagonist from Bleach was responsible for causing huge chaos. He was originally the captain of the 5th Division, but he later betrayed the Soul Society. As a former Gate captain in Bleach, Aizen's betrayal was painful to the members of the Soul Society. He made efficient use of his time shortly after retreating. It wasn't long before he formed the Espada and became the official leader of Los Notches. The coolest aspect of Aizen's character is his abilities. Very few villains boast of the same intellect as Aizen, who is a master tactician. Aizen's intelligence allowed him to beat many opponents without even trying. In addition to being able to hypnotize virtually anyone, Aizen can kill average humans with his presence alone. With his Kyokusa Jetsu, Aizen could control all five senses. The Hojioku also allowed him a variety of monstrous forms to remain a threat when Ichigo converted his spiritual pressure into physical strength. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1. Dio Brando. Dio Brando from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a classic villain through and through. He's an invader in the Joestar family and throws away his humanity to get power. He's thoroughly petty and completely emasculates Jonathan. He even succeeds in his goal of killing Jonathan by the end of part 1. That alone would earn him notoriety as a villain. Dio's actions end up rippling into all future parts, though. He's responsible for character deaths in Part 2 and returns as the main villain of Part 3. In this new form, he's called Dio and has one of the most powerful stand abilities in the series. His minions and children would go on to be major players in future parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but none achieve his gravitas. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watchzilla and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.